Thank you so much. That was beautiful. What a gift we have, the music from all ages. What a, what a gift, what a blessing. Let's continue in prayer. God, we do thank you for the gift that is ours that you invite us into to worship you. And as we worship, to be shaped and formed ourselves, we pray to become more and more like you. Grant us ears to hear right now the word you would speak to us that we, Lord, may be shaped and formed by your word and follow you, live out your word in our lives, in our world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. So again, what a great opportunity we have to worship. And today we're continuing our sermon series. We've got one more week next week for this sermon series called Jesus Resolutions. And what we're talking about is following Jesus, of all things, and that if we follow Jesus, we will experience that thing he promises, that abundant life that he says he came to offer us if we'll just follow him. And yet that's the, the challenge for us. It's actually following him. So we're talking about some of these resolutions that Jesus would have us make that will help us dig in this year and follow him. I had a dream just a, a week or so ago. I was preaching to a congregation, and I was saying something like this. I said, we've got to follow Jesus. We're called to follow Jesus. Kind of an unusual thing for a pastor to say, right? But somehow, somebody in the back of that, that was just really captured by it, and he, he yelled back out. He said, our pastor just said we should follow Jesus. Like, this is the most amazing thing we've ever heard. And maybe it is. Maybe we need to hear it with fresh ears. Our pastor just said, we should follow Jesus, he cried out. And I said, yes, we should follow Jesus. And he said, we should follow Jesus. And people started saying that. He got on a bicycle. We'd had that happen in worship not too long ago. Some people came in with bicycles. He got on his bicycle and went riding off into the public, yelling out, our pastor said we should follow Jesus and expect miracles. And I'm like, did I say expect miracles? And I'm thinking, well, yeah, if we follow Jesus, we should expect miracles. And he's going off saying that. And then I thought, I turned back to the congregation. I said, but you got to understand that following Jesus is not just an overnight thing. The miracles don't just happen over. we got to follow Jesus for the long haul. This is a, a long journey that we commit ourselves. And then I woke up. <laughs> but it felt like a pretty good message for me to hear and to pass on. That this is a long haul thing. We're committing ourselves as we begin 2024 to digging in, making these resolutions to follow Jesus. And we need to encourage each other to do it because if we do it, well, we can expect miracles. We can expect transformation within us and in our relationships, in our families and in our world. This is the promise, that abundant life as we follow Jesus. In today's gospel lesson from the ch first chapter of Mark, we hear this continuing story of people beginning to follow Jesus. And yeah, miracles happening. The kingdom of God, Jesus says, has come near. And as he calls people to follow him, we see the signs of that kingdom, the miracles of that kingdom breaking in. So I invite you to listen in. May God give us ears to hear, not just the story, uh, but help us to hear this call for us to follow and what we can expect as we do. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And 
Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve him. That evening, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. And he would not let the demons speak, for they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, everyone's searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You hear that word and in there? Like, this is the book of Mark. He's just kind of on a run through it. And they left the synagogue, and they entered the house, and this happened, and, the, and, 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 did you hear that one verse in the middle of it? He got up early in the morning while it was still very dark, and there he prayed. He went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Like, this is a key verse for us to hear. We'll hear these verses periodically throughout the Gospel of Mark and the other Gospels, too. That there's this, this rhythm, this pattern that we see in Jesus that we need to, if we want to follow him, really grab hold of and make a part of the rhythm of our lives. Jesus got up early in the morning, went out to a deserted place, and there he, he, he prayed. It's like breathing for us. You got to breathe in if you want to breathe out. You got to breathe out if you want to breathe in. If you're a tree, you got to dig out your roots into the, into the soil and take in that, that nourishment, and you got to reach up with your branches and produce seeds and leaves and fruit. Like, that's what life is for an organism like a tree or a human being. Physically, we've got to breathe in and out. And spiritually, this is one of the most simple and important lessons that we can take to heart. If we want to follow Jesus, if we want to have a vibrant spiritual life, if we want to have an abundant life that produces fruit that not only is good for us, but abounds with grace and goodness for those around us, we've got to Follow Jesus in this very simple pattern of life. Breathing in and breathing out. Reaching out with our roots into the stream of God's grace, God's word of prayer. And reaching out with compassion. As we look to Jesus, we see this pattern over and over again. Jesus practiced prayer. We think about this passage. You'll see it again in John chapter 6 where he feeds 5,000 men plus women and children. What's that, 10, 20,000 people? He feeds them with just a few pieces of fish and bread. And then he goes up on the mountain to pray. The disciples go out on the boat across the lake, and it's after Jesus prays, he walks on water. What do you think empowers him as a human being to do this mighty work? Chapter 9, he goes up on a mountain. We're going to talk about this next week. He's transfigured before three of his disciples. And his clothes become this dazzling white. And then they go down, and his other disciples have been trying to cast out a demon, a, an unclean spirit. They can't do it. Jesus goes, and he casts out the unclean spirit. And they ask him, well, how come you could do it? We couldn't do it. He says, this one only comes out through prayer. you got to pray if you want to do these kind of things. You think about what he does before he goes to the cross, as Dan was talking about, before he's going to be betrayed by one of his good friends. But, uh, he's going to be having his other friends run away from him, desert him. 
what does he do before he's going to face this great challenge and victory? He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he, he prays. This is his pattern. Jesus prays. And Jesus reaches out with compassion. Jesus, over and over again, everywhere he goes, to Capernaum and to every other city in Galilee, he keeps on going out and reaching out with God's compassion to people. To each person, each crowd, everywhere he goes, he reaches out to lepers and touches them. He sits down with sinners and he eats with them, even though nobody else will be seen with them. He's seen with them. He eats with them. He befriends them. He shows compassion to everybody who's willing to receive it. That's still true today. And if we want to follow Jesus, if we want to follow Jesus, <laughs> this is the pattern we need to be practicing in our own life. We need to be taking time to pray. We need to practice prayer and reach out with compassion to others. This is the pattern of our lives. We will practice prayer. Like This is part of the resolution we're going to make today, to practice prayer. And I want to give you a, a brief acronym to, to think about. It might be helpful to you as you think about instituting prayer on a regular basis in your life. And the, the word would be pray, the acronym P-R-A-Y. The P would simply be to pick a time and a place, you know, to plan. That would be another word for P, plan. Like if you leave here today and say, yeah, I'm going to start praying, but you don't make a plan to pray, you're not going to do it very much. It's just not going to happen except maybe when you're in trouble. That we need to pick a time and a place. I know this is true for me when it comes to exercise. Like if I say, well, tomorrow I'm going to exercise, but I leave it at that, I'm not as likely to, to exercise tomorrow if I don't say, okay, when I get up in the morning before breakfast or right after or whatever, I'm going to exercise. Same thing with prayer. You got to plan for it. You got to pick a time, a place for it. You know, maybe that's early in the morning when you first get up, or maybe after your first coffee. Or maybe it's at the end of the day, but be careful because if you do it laying down in bed, uh, chances are you might fall asleep. So pick a time, a place, plan so that you do follow through in prayer. The second thing would be the R, it would be to make it a regular routine so that it's a part of your ongoing life. It's like any other habit that we develop. You've got to practice it. So this is part of the wonderful thing with these Jesus resolutions. I hope you're taking those cards as you leave here and that you're thinking about these verses, even memorizing them, practicing these resolutions so that they become a regular part of your routine. And this would be the key one here is that we make it a regular part of our routine to pray and to um, you know, do that like any other habit that we want to make sure takes place in our life. The A would be to, uh, it would be three words I'll give you. Adore, acknowledge, and ask. So the adore would be when you pray, take time to give thanks. Take time to uh, look at, back at your day and say thanks for this or look forward on the day and say thank you for these opportunities, whatever it might be, but take time to praise God, to thank God. Second would be acknowledge. Acknowledge your own sin, how you're falling short. Acknowledge the troubles, the challenges you're facing. Be honest with God. Acknowledge, lament the troubles that we're facing, the way things are going sideways in our world or downhill. Acknowledge that and then ask for God's help. Ask him. I think of Philippians chapter 4, where it says in, in one version, tell God every detail of your needs in earnest and thankful prayer, and the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. But take time to ask for God's help, for his forgiveness, for his empowerment, for his guidance. And then even ask him, what is it you'd have me do? How is it you'd have me show compassion in my life even today, even tomorrow, ask God. And so then that leads us to the why, which is yes. Say yes to God. Make that a part of your prayer. That you always end by saying, okay, God, I say yes to you. I commit myself to you. I will follow you today. Say yes. So that's some tips for making us practice prayer on a regular basis. Then we come to reach out with compassion. 
And the word out would be the acronym, O-U-T. It simply would be to open our hearts to God, open our hearts to other people. Ask God's help with this. God, help me open up my heart to receive your Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, as they were even singing, and it comes from Psalm 51, give me a, a, a willing spirit, an open heart. Help me, God, to be open to the people around me, to your call in my life. And then the you would be the word understand, that we would seek to understand the people around us, that we would be willing to walk a mile in their shoes or at least imagine what it might be like to be walking a mile in their shoes, that we would seek to be understanding people's experience. Like there's a reason they're acting the way they do. They think the way they do. They, they didn't grow up and come the exact same path as us and then suddenly they're thinking this way or feeling that way. There's a reason. Can we help to understand that? It doesn't mean we're going to end up agreeing, but maybe we can understand one another better and then work together, talk together. Can we seek to understand one another? Can we pray for that to happen? I, I think of you know, what Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, Matthew 5 as well, Luke chapter 6, where he talks about praying for those who persecute you. Like if you, somebody's bugging you, you're angry with them, pray for them. And pray that God would help you have an open heart, have understanding, even if you're not going to let them keep hurting you. But God, help me, help me here to have understanding at least. And then the T uh, would be try. You know, like, just try stuff. <laughs> try to be compassionate. Try to be kind. Try to serve. Dan was talking about what a cool thing it was at our meeting the other night to hear from people who are serving in their areas of giftedness and of passion. And that's what we want here. We want to serve in the ways we've been gifted. But the only way we really find, figure that out is by trying stuff. So, you know, join in in serving in different ways here and find out how God has gifted you and how it makes a difference. You know, try to be compassionate. I think about even what Jesus does here with his compassion of casting out unclean spirits. And this would be something that I think is important for us. I want to just kind of bring this home for us. Last week, Pastor Terry talked about Jesus casting out demons and unclean spirits and how we can go too far with that. We can be all focused in on the demons, the demons, the unclean spirits, and we try to, we don't know that much about it. The Bible doesn't give us all that much insight. What it does tell us is that it, there's a reality to the spiritual world. There's a reality to the unclean spirits. And we need to be aware of that, but not make that our focus. Our focus needs to be on Jesus Christ. Our focus needs to be on the Holy Spirit. And so we name the unclean spirits, and we pray that God, we cast them out in the name of Jesus, and we pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us. And so for an example would be we're coming into an election year, and it's very likely we'll see more and more of the unclean spirits kind of rising up. We're going to give them lots of opportunities to the, the spirit of hostility and bitterness and divisiveness and a judgmental spirit. Isn't it true? Like these are the spirits that are going to rise up. We're just going to say, come and get us. And we've got to not do that as followers of Jesus. We've got to say, stop, no, at least here in this community, at least here in my heart, in my family, I say no to that judgmental spirit, that divisive spirit, that spirit of hostility. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. And I pray for the Holy Spirit to fill me. I pray, would you join me in praying for the Holy Spirit to fill us? We were talking about this in confirmation class this morning, how Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, if we pray to the Father for the Holy Spirit, he loves to give us the Holy Spirit. So let us pray for the Holy Spirit. He will give it so that the fruit of the Spirit is what we see. Not the works of the flesh, the fruit of those unclean spirits, but that we here at Salem, we would witness to a different spirit, the Holy Spirit among us, as we follow Jesus. I mean, you talk about a miracle? <laughs> Wouldn't that be it? That in 2024, as we head to an election season, that we would be shaped and formed and bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so I want to invite you this it's so important that we commit ourselves to following Jesus in prayer and in showing compassion, both of these, strengthened by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, 
rooted in prayer, we will show compassion, reach out with compassion to our world this year more than ever. And so our resolution for this week is this. I will practice praying and reaching out with compassion. I will practice praying and reaching out with compassion. Would you say that with me? I will practice praying and reaching out with compassion. We will follow Jesus this week, this year, and we're going to expect miracles because we're going to pray. We're going to reach out with compassion. As Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 5, our memory verse, our chew on it verse this week, you know, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do, do nothing. May we abide in Jesus and bear good fruit. May we be rooted in prayer and reach out with compassion. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that you give us the chance to follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit to help us do that, your word to help us do that, each other to help us do that. May we do that. May we be rooted in prayer. May we be reaching out with compassion. And may you, O oh God, be glorified. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.